The field of aquatic veterinary medicine is certainly varied. It can be a doctor who takes care of koi or even a pet goldfish or a veterinarian who ensures that a supply of gooey ducks is healthy and ready to be safely shipped overseas. Yes, you heard right, gooey ducks. And no, they're not birds. Aquaculture veterinarians aim to prevent disease. They have the expertise and legal authority to prescribe medication. Plus, they also work with their fish farming clients to develop biosecurity measures to avoid introducing diseases, just like a large animal veterinarian would do with dairy farmers or hog farmers. Working with pet fish is only one facet of the multifaceted field of aquaculture. Pet fish medicine is pretty much where avian medicine or small mammal medicine was maybe 10, 20, 30 years ago. Well, I have a client that I just saw two days ago that traveled seven hours to come and see me because there's nobody in her area um, that sees pet fish. And that goes to show you that we need more pet fish veterinarians. Besides looking after their clients and their pet fish, aquatic veterinary medicine is also very much about aquaculture or farming seafood and keeping our seafood supply safe. It's a field that's growing by leaps and bounds. Aquatic uh, veterinary medicine probably is the largest growing discipline of veterinary medicine. Um, it's been uh, growing rapidly in the last 10 to 15 years. It covers and overlaps everything from uh, uh, aquatic mammals, marine mammals, uh, down to invertebrates, and also covers all sorts of spheres and disciplines within veterinary medicine, and certainly encompasses uh, everything that we normally deal with in companion animals, uh, all the way to food producing animals. According to the AVMA, aquaculture production in 2005 was already a $1.1 billion industry. Sales of fish, shellfish, and other aquaculture products grew roughly 12% between 1998 and 2005. All that fish has to be grown and cultivated, similar to livestock or a crop in the field, free of disease with adequate food and appropriate growing conditions. Well, definitely, whether it be wheat farm or potatoes or, or gooey ducks or uh, the oysters, it's, it's, it's definitely farming, it's just aquatic farming. We, uh, we clean our beds, you know, we work with the adult plants or, or shellfish. We work with genetics to, to select the best ones to reproduce. We saw with the algae over there, we actually add nutrients to the water, try to get the algae growing, fertilizer. Here at Taylor's Hatchery in Quilcene, Washington, they're raising something most of you might not have heard of, gooey ducks. The most recent um, shellfish uh, that has been spawned in a hatchery and um, is now being uh, grown in Puget Sound in various areas is the gooey duck. It's a large clam, the largest clam that we have in uh, North America. These days, it's a valuable shellfish product sold to the Chinese and Japanese for highly desired sushi. Although it looks more like Jabba the Hutt than an edible clam, a single gooey duck can be worth $60 in a Hong Kong market. Tailors still harvest oysters, clams, and mussels, just as they have for over 100 years, but gooey ducks have now surpassed those other delicacies as the number one moneymaker for the company. Well, as far as the hatchery here, we, we never did gooey ducks in the past. It was, this hatchery was built for oyster clam, oyster seed and vanilla clam seed, and that was it. Then we started doing in the, the different types of oysters. We started doing the, the mussels. Um, we experimented with scallops and abalone, a few things. Then the gooey duck came along. And now the majority of my revenue for, for this facility comes in from gooey duck seed. It doesn't come in from oysters or clams. Although you'd want to pronounce it geoduck based on its spelling, the name comes from a Nisqually Indian term, guiduck, that means dig deep. The gooey ducks burrow deep into the sand to stay away from predators, and it's quite a process to get them out of the water. You have a pump, pumping water, goes through a, a hose, you know, inch and a half hose or so, two inch hose, uh, knock down to a three quarter inch pipe, you know, about the length of your arm. You do, uh, you know, spy either the tip of the neck or indentation where the neck uh, was, but he's pulled his neck down, and you put a, a water jet down uh, next to that and liquefy the sand and, and pull the duck out. Ed says getting the gooey ducks harvested and shipped safely is definitely a team effort between the hatchery manager and veterinarian. The job here is, has so many facets to it, and uh, from first off, just getting 
something to survive to all the way up through marketing. And John or Ralph Ellison with the pathologist we deal with quite a lot, have a big hand in a lot of what we do with that. Um, from, I just mentioned we dumped this gooey duck tank a little while ago, the gooey duck larvae. I still don't know why they died, they overcome the bacteria. So we work with a pathologist on trying to solve some of our problems with that. Work with uh, John on uh, a lot of permitting issues for our shipping and make sure things are well certified. We have to do that quite annually, semi-annually, quite a lot. So a combination of how to make things survive here, as well as from the marketing standpoint, how can we get things shipped out and into the facility. Maintaining the pristine setting of western Washington is also a vital component of work at the hatchery and something the aquaculture veterinarian knows is important for future generations. It's a matter of us trying to maintain the quality of our environment to retain the species that have been here for thousands of years and to be able to live a lifestyle that we want to live in. We have to change our view to recognize uh, that native species are important. If you'd like to order some delicious Pacific Northwest delicacies, just log on to taylorshellfishfarms.com. They've got some great recipes there as well.